Antiseptic Guy, also known as Anti for short, is a popular enigma within the YouTube community. He is a fan-originated persona of the popular YouTuber Jacksepticeye, known for his energetic and enthusiastic personality. Antiseptic-eye, on the other hand, is portrayed as a mysterious and malevolent figure, often causing chaos and destruction in his wake. The creation of Antiseptic-eye can be traced back to a series of fan posts and fan art that emerged in the early days of Sean's career. These creations portrayed Sean as a darker, more sinister version of himself, and the character quickly gained a following among fans. As Sean's popularity grew, so did interest in Andy, and the character became a staple of the fan community. However, there are many interpretations of the character currently floating about, and the release of the Iris project doesn't make things any easier. And so, to make this massive livestream and everything that came before it more digestible, I'll be dividing this video into four parts. The true origins of Andy, the original version of Andy, how Sean changed Antiseptic-Eye forever, and the story so far. So without further ado, join me as we delve into the world of this sans looking ass. <laughs> Did you miss me? Antiseptic-Eye wasn't the first time an evil alter ego of a rather positive person was born. In fact, Anti wasn't even the first alternate of a YouTuber. While there were many concepts for the opposites of these online content creators born from the minds of the evolving fan bases at the time, Markiplier was the first to actually provide inspiration for these ideas to fester. I'm not entirely sure if the imagination of evil YouTubers led to fans creating Darkiplier, or rather fans outside the Markiplier community adopted the foundation of Dark and applied it to others. Regardless, 2012 was the time when Dark was born, and other variations for all YouTubers alike soon followed after, usually accompanied with the play on words of the YouTuber's name that established them as more sinister, I guess? I mean, Dark for Mark gets the job done. If you're interested in a more in-depth look at the start of this trend, then I'd recommend watching this video by Edeha. I enjoyed the content he puts out, and I'm sure you all will too. In fact, his video inspired this one. Anyway, TLDR, the Jacksepticeye community was fascinated with seeing what a supposed opposite version of Sean would look like. Since the fandoms between the two breakout gamers shared a similar style of content, it wouldn't be a surprise if the influence for this idea was carried over from Darkiplier. Plus, the creepy thumbnails and videos sure did help fans with garnering their own inspiration as well where Jack lacked. My evil version, like, oh, that's who Jack turns into when he gets elated when he kills people and then it kind of took on a life of its own and people actually started canonically drawing a, a figmentation of what he would look like. Now that we know where it all stemmed from, when was it that Antiseptica evolved from a mere niche dream to a fully visualized character? Well, it didn't happen instantly. Instead, it was a gradual build of suspense and intrigue until Andy made his grand appearance. Originally, Sean's occasional scary edits went up a notch or two and a pattern began to form. Glitches with a specific style and an iconic laugh were soon created, highlighted especially in Sean's playthrough of Five Nights at Freddy's sister location, where Sean would just disappear and Andy would take his place, but without us ever knowing that it was him. Sean's Twitter name even changed from Jack to Anti to signify the slow takeover, with the titular Zalgo font at the helm of it all. And I was late to sister location anyway, so I was like, okay, people aren't going to watch this anyway, so let's spice it up a bit. So I started doing glitchy shit, and then that kind of fed into the Anti stuff. It all came to a head on October 31st, 2016, when Sean would post a video of him carving pumpkins in celebration of the festivities for a second year in a row. The pumpkin carvings would come to be a regular, but at this time, this was just thought to be any old video. However, it'd be proven just how wrong this perception was, as this marked the first official appearance Andy made, taking over control of Jack by slowly and incrementally influencing the world around him until enough things went wrong for him to possess Jack's body and force him to turn the very knife he'd been using on the pumpkins on himself. Handshaking and lips quivering, the job was done. 
within this unnerving creep fest. Auntie made a remark about how we're the reason this all occurred, as all we did was just watch Jack suffer instead of trying to help. And thus, as the video came to an end, the reign of antiseptic eye began. <laughs> you could have stopped me, but you just watched. The next we saw Anti was when he made a surprise appearance during the intro to Jack's PAX East 2017 panel. Sean appeared on the big screen, letting the audience know that they were going to record a message as an interactive game. But the screen suddenly glitched out to reveal Anti. He mocked the audience for thinking he was gone and was offended at the idea that they'd permanently replaced him with Jack. He warned them that he wasn't going anywhere and that they wouldn't ever be rid of him. The screen cut to black as Auntie's voice echoed through the hall. You can't get rid of me. Enjoy the show. Aside from mentions and random minor glitches strewn about the otherwise normal videos, what really stood out as prominent in the 2017 timeline for Auntie was his encounters with Jameson Jackson, Dr. Schneepelstein, and the ever illicit Dr. Plyer. I think it's time we have a chat about what Anti really is and how it ties elsewhere. Sean has been at it on YouTube for well over a decade now and he has managed to remain extraordinarily relevant despite others in a similar situation falling into obscurity. The thing is, a large part of that has to do with how creative he is with the projects he decides to be a part of. We have Thankmas, his coffee company, and then we have the egos. Short for alter egos, this concept is just a fancy term for any character that he or Mark play themselves. If you'd like to learn more about this concept, then do check out this video here. But to keep things short and simple, if Mark and Jack appears anyone but themselves, then they're an ego. People such as Marvin, Jackie Boy, Dr. Schneebelstein, Jamie Jackson, and Chase were all considered egos. And so, pair this with the assumption that Anti is a virus trying to take over whatever he can, it's then that you have a spelled out narrative of all these characters slowly but surely encountering the threat of Anti and succumbing to his rule. However, during the era of Despacito and the iPhone 10. A common misconception came to rise in the lore of Jack's channel, and it was regarding how people imagined Anti to not be his own person but rather a darker side of Jack, where one couldn't be complete without the other and they couldn't exist without one another. In fact, it was widely accepted that all of Jack's egos were just him or a part of him. No one can be blamed for thinking that either. After all, any other theory is hard to form when you literally see Jack get quote unquote in character on screen. And the term alter ego sure didn't help either. Plus, both Dark and Anti were born out of the evil YouTuber trend, and their crossover only suggested the same idea, as it not only featured more creatively named personas of other YouTubers, but outright implied that both Dark and Anti were just hyper inflections of their YouTube counterparts. But in defense of Mark and Sean, not only has this duel now come to be known as non-canon, effectively separating these universes, but Dark was later explained to be their own entity and the same plot would befall Anti with how we perceive him now. <laughs> 2018 to 2019 was a weird year for Anti. The fans were well fed, yes, but he made no prominent appearance aside from a lot of minor ones spread out through numerous videos. These small snippets are not to be taken lightly though, as they provided some of the most lore-heavy stories up till now. These will be discussed primarily in the last segment of this video, but it's important to note how Sean, both during these times and numerous moments afterwards, has gone on record to state that the story of these characters is important to him. What happened to the egos? Nothing. We've been working on them. I've got like, I've got like a proper timeline planned out now and stuff is falling into place. There's just a lot of elements to it to get in order that I want to make sure is right. The actual timeline and chronology of what I want to happen is actually all basically pretty much in place now. And how he wants to portray it right. The gap in ego content from 2020 to the middle of 2022 is only evidence of the care and fondness that Sean has for his craft, since he spent those years perfecting his talents to deliver the most ambitious project he has worked on to date. Previously, we'd gotten the power hours, Argentum, Inanis, and Chase, but this blew all the others out of the park. 
eight months of pure hard work and dedication, organizing, planning, and filming all came together when Sean hosted a live stream on the 31st of October. I'll let past me take over just to explain why a simple stream deserves the praise that it gets. There are two important aspects to the live stream itself. One is the interviewed style section that I had already mentioned a bit ago, which is where we catch up with Chase immediately after the events of a short. And the most astonishing part of it all, the rest of the live stream has everything to do with unlocking these parts. You heard me right. We as a viewer were granted the power to change and interact with how the live stream progressed. Through speaking with YouTube directly and arranging a lot of bots on Sean's part, we were greeted by a variety of puzzles to solve. A timer ticked down at the bottom of the screen, thus giving us a deadline to solve them. If unsuccessful, we move on to the next puzzle, and the next, and the next. This would repeat until we got the answer to one, which would then transition to the greatest story of Chase and Auntie as we spectated how things played out. Okay, enough of listening to past me ramble on. Present me has a lot more to do of that anyway. These puzzles, reveals, and live action moments may have not told us a lot, but it did effectively confirm that all the egos we've been following up to this point aren't Jack, nor even a part of him. They're all their own people that are just terrorized by the monstrosity that is anti. I'm sure you all must be asking though, why? Well, let's take a look at just that. <laughs> <laughs> a story isn't complete without a protagonist and antagonist to follow. Surprisingly, Jacksepticeye isn't one or the other despite it being his universe. Instead, those titles belong to Chase Brody and Antiseptikai respectively from what we've seen thus far. They're two sides of the same coin, further grounding the point I'd made earlier about how they aren't just alternate versions of Jack. Chase, alongside Jameson, Dr. Schneeplestein, and Jack himself, have all been subjected to some sort of torment at the hands of Anti all the way from 2016 to now. The four are aware of each other and have even tried to help one another but to no avail. We've seen time and time again how they've all been tossed around like ragdolls and mistreated to no end. The power hours and pumpkin carving videos are a great example of this. See? I told you the latter would become important. Anyway, Anti may have control, but he has control over everyone except Chase. For some reason, the dude who ran a vlogging channel has remained safe from the clutches of Anti. However, he's still the one that has suffered the most. With an already failed marriage and a lost custody over his kids, Chase had to then witness Anti slaughter them all, something he tries to still endlessly cope with to this day as we see in his own short. Speaking of which, released back in 2019, this cinematic set up the Iris project for us. A name that wasn't just used for the live stream, but also a facility that we'd gotten to know existed way back when in Marvin's journey in Argentum in Nanus that came out a year later after Chase. In it, we spectate Marvin gaze into the world of his fellow egos. Though unsure of what that may have entailed in present events, it's a common theory that Marvin is against Andy. Who wouldn't be? Having covered all the rest, the last of the known egos is Jackie Boy, who has stayed largely distant and disconnected from the canon so there isn't a whole lot at all to cover with him. I guess all that's relevant to mention is how he's a superhero but again, it's not a lot to go off of. Now that we're all caught up, how does Anti fit in with all of this? Well, believe it or not, he does have his reasoning for all the vile acts he continues to commit to this day. And it's all been portrayed time and time again from his very first entrance. He wants control. He wants power. He wants to get rid of his contemporaries and force the spotlight on himself. You see, Anti is aware of the YouTube channel that exists and how it allows us to peer into all these stories. And he wants himself at the center of them all. Something outright conveyed to us in the Iris project is how we grant Anti's wish to be just that much truer every day. We popularized him and gave him enough attention to actualize. So for this, the whole idea of the stream was that you guys were interacting so heavily with it and you were getting so involved with it that you didn't realize that you were like driving things to happen. So by the end of it, 
we took all control away from you. So there's a reason that at the end we cycled through all the rooms and none of your commands worked anymore. Because now it's supposed to be like a snowball effect. It's something Anti comments about regularly too. If it wasn't for us, Chase and all his other cohorts wouldn't be in danger and scared out of their mind. Where Anti came from in lore standards though is something still kept under lock and key. It's not that the story isn't there, in fact quite the opposite. Sean went into great detail about how he has the full story planned but he wants to take his time with panning it all out. And I... guys, you have no idea. I have so many ideas for this universe. It's crazy. And I'm like, okay, one step at a time. I like... I'm my own worst enemy because I want to do all of them all at once. And then I'm like, okay, that's the way none of them get done. Or take a really fucking long time to get done. So I'm like, okay, pick your battles. <laughs> What we do know for sure is that whatever the fuck is going on with Marvin or Jack or Auntie or even Chase all ties back to Iris, the facility where Chase Brody was captured, Auntie made his return and Echo was first revealed. They're an organization that specializes in containing creatures such as Anti, which is why they went after Chase after detecting that he had a connection to him. They've been here for quite a while and if their Twitter has anything to say, they even have ties with time travel. Though again, that's just a mystery that we are quite literally not allowed to solve right now because there isn't a lot that we can piece together aside from the fact that there's a lot more ahead of us. Some interesting facts to note though is that Anti was contained within the IS facility at some point before he broke out, as was Echo. Both of them being classified as the same being, known as Alters, not to be confused with Alter Egos, though we aren't sure what it stands for. However, the serial number specifically assigned to Anti does spell out his name, so we know it is connected in some way, shape or form. Bet you didn't know that, did you? That information was actually provided to me by a fellow viewer in the comments. So if you guys have any of your own theories or suggestions for what I should cover, then go on ahead and let me know. Anyway, that's about it. I for one am excited for what Jack has in store for us, especially since he's so excited about it. I hope to be seeing Anti real soon in the future and you bet your ass I'll be covering it when he does appear. But in the meantime guys, this has been it. Thank you for watching.